Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary. And today I have joining me from Ripple Training, Steve Martin. Good to see you, Brian. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. So today you've got some more Final Cut love for us. And, and love from that kind of standpoint of the beginning parts of editorial where you've got a lot of stuff to go through, you're logging it. Not the most fun part, because no, it's most time consuming. A, but it's essential because it you, is. Uh, you know, the time you put up front is going to save you time on the back end when you're looking for stuff. Right, when you're trying to find that one great sound bite or one great take, and if you've not marked it or not any way identified it, it's like needle in a haystack. Right. So I'm going to show you one of the new features in Final Cut 7. It's allowing you to uh, essentially mark a clip on the fly as you're mm. watching it. Okay. And it's really handy if you want to kind of make you know, annotations on a clip, particularly a long, long-winded interview or a talking Shh. head. This is a, a great technique. As opposed to what? Meaning, like, how was it before? Why is this different than the way it was because before? You, the, because you can actually mark and annotate on the fly while it's playing back. So well, you don't, you don't have, have to stop the play. You don't have to stop the play. Okay. And that's that's the key. So let's uh, look at um, bringing up the the button list editor so you can see what I'm going to be bringing up. So I'm going to okay. hit uh, Option J. And into the button list editor, I'm going to type mark. Notice we have, look at, look at how many marker commands are. It's unbelievable. It's a huge list. Uh, but the one I'm really interested in, one that's called add and edit marker. And there's okay. one for each color. So there's eight, you know, eight colors here. I'm just going to grab this orange one here and drop it into the button bar of the viewer. Okay. okay. And you'll see why in a moment. There's a couple of other little handy ones that I find useful here. If you scroll down toward the bottom, there's one called uh, play to uh, next marker and play to current marker. I like this play to next mark. You'll see why that's handy in a minute. We'll just go throw that in there, okay? okay? And as you can see, I have a, an interview loaded up in the viewer, right. okay? And, uh, you know, it's a, a short one, but you can imagine this could be a long one. But I'm going to start playing it, listening for sound cues. Sure. And then as it's playing, I'm going to click this button. Actually, I'm not going to click it. I could use Option Shift 2 okay. to bring it up, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and play and listen to sound cues. And as it's, as it's playing, I'm going to make little notes about what she's saying. Play is going to keep moving. I'm going to hit that button. It's going to bring up an edit mark window. I'm going to make notes. Mm -hmm. It's a quick way to get through it. So let's, let's go ahead and do this, see how it works. So I'm going to press the space bar. We're playing off the young actors. Um, when I first started coming around here and working here, you know, I was, I was only 16 and a little nervous. So I'm going to type in know, only 16. Never really been out in the real world too much. Click OK. Notice the playhead's still moving. Right. Everyone here was so great, and I was just learning. And, and uh, I, definitely, I definitely paid my dues. With okay, so I paid my dues. So she goes like, you know, I can um, be happy, pay I can make for other happy school, all at the same time. and uh, click OK. Right Notice now. play, it keeps moving, and I've got markers in there. That's right. So if I use shift up arrow, there's my there's my markers. Mm -hmm. So I have a quick way of annotating a long dialogue with little notes. Okay. There's a, you, you you wonder why I had that other button up there. If I want to check these, so let's say if I put my butt play hit somewhere here, and there's a button that says play to current marker. Right. It'll just play from wherever the play it is to that marker and stop. Yeah. So you can actually check to Very see nice. that that's the, the right piece of uh, dialogue that you want. And you can over. nudge the markers, too, one way or the other. Yeah, you can, you can hold the command key down, and you can drag them. So right if you around. didn't get it exactly on where you wanted, you can nudge it. Right. So I do a lot of documentary mm -hmm. editorial and producing, and sometimes you can have hours, of, hours. Of, of interview footage to go through. I like to go through it at uh, two times speed because I can still – understand what they're saying, but I can take, you know, 30 minutes now and 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, will that work the same way here? Yes, it will. As a matter of fact, let, let's try it. So if we click in here, just for the people that don't know what the keyboard shortcuts are, you can go to markers and then delete all. It's the control grov key. Okay. Control grov. Yes. And it clears them out. Okay. But basically, uh, I'm going to do uh, two times speed, and that's just the JK, you know, L key twice. Okay. And then, of course, we can use the keyboard shortcut here. In this case, it's option shift two. Okay. So let's do that. So we'll hit play. Twice. Option shift two. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Click like return. Option shift two. Those are the notes. So you can see you can, you can move through at uh, double speed, make your notes. So it works well. You know what that's really good for is, especially in, in these interview situations, you're hearing the person ask the question, 
Yes. And you can just type in what the question is, and then you're listening to the response, and then when the next question comes. So it really allows you to break it up by those sound bites. And then you can go through again and make, you know, get the, the, the gems, the gold. Absolutely. As, in fact, you'll notice in the actual browser, notice I'm doing this in the viewer, because right. I want those markers to be with the clip. Right. Instead of like, I'm not doing them down on the timeline. Because then want... they'd be with the sequence. Exactly, and if you look at the, uh, the uh, browser, you can see that all my markers are actually listed right there with the clips. Right. They stay with the clip. Which you could then turn those into, into sub, -clips sub clips or leave them as markers. Exactly. This is a great you know, tip that uh, allows for someone to see a, a difference between different versions of the, of the studio. Um, where can people find more information about Final Cut Pro 7 specific versus the other versions? Well, we have an entire training called Final Cut Pro 7 core training up on our site, and it's available on DVD or through iTunes. And that's rippletraining.com? Rippletraining.com. It's a great resource if you want to learn kind of like the, you know, the full scope of what Final mm -hmm. Cut Pro 7 can do. Great. Again, this is Steve Martin from rippletraining.com. I'm Brian Gary, your host, and thanks for watching MacBreak Studio.